Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be a tutorial guide on how to use the new drone UAV in PUBG along with the new medical EMT kit. Both of those are included in the new tactical gear that PUBG's added, which takes up a primary weapon slot in your character's inventory. We're also going to discuss the new live ping option, action queuing, and the VSS and Winchester 94 buff. So starting off with one of the new items, the new drone and the tactical gear. Now the drone is going to be a lootable item that you find on the ground. It'll look like a little UAV controller with a screen tablet on top of it. To deploy the drone, it's left click on your mouse or right trigger on your controller. It's about a five second animation delay and your character will throw the drone out in front of them and it'll start hovering and you'll automatically enter drone mode. Now, a couple key things to note here. While you're in drone mode, your character is going to stay exactly where they were when you released the drone. So it's important to make sure you're in good cover. You can also crouch or prone while using the drone. So it would be a good idea to stay behind an object or, you know, be crouched into a corner of a room when you're going to deploy the drone. Now, once the drone's deployed, you can do a couple of neat things with the drone. Number one, you can drive it 300 meters in any direction away from your character. That's north, south, east, and west, and even straight vertical up or down. You'll be alerted when you're getting to the maximum distance in the bottom left of your screen. That's how many meters away you are from your character. Once you get to about 90 meters left from the maximum distance, you will start to get an alert ping and the screen will start to fade out, letting you know you need to come back closer to your character. While you're flying the drone around, you can do a couple of pretty useful things. Number one, you can use the new live ping marker to ping on anywhere on the map for yourself or your teammates where an enemy might be or where the next rotation place may be or where we have vehicles there or certain weapons there. And we'll go into more detail about the pings later in the video. In addition to just scouting for intel with the drone, you can also pick up and drop items that are lootable with the drone. And this is probably going to be the drone's best feature. So any item that you see, it's on the ground that's lootable. It can be something as small as a bandage, a level three helmet, or even like the new deployable bicycle. The drone can pick up one single item in its suitcase and can bring it back to your, to your own character, or you can drop it off anywhere you want on the map as long as you're within the 300 meters distance. So to give you an example, you can fly the drone to a level two helmet that you see on the ground on top of a rooftop and then bring it back to your character and use it for yourself. Or if one of your teammates vest gets busted or they got headshot and they no longer have a helmet, you can go fly around, find them a helmet and bring one back for them. Really, really cool stuff. Now, a couple countermeasures here for the drone for enemies are going to be the drone is very, very noticeable in the air. So it has big blinking red and green lights on it, especially if you're playing a nighttime mode like Vikendi. It's really, really noticeable where the drone is. The drone does have an audible noise about 50 meters away from the character. You can start to hear it coming. It's not too, too loud, but it is definitely noticeable and you'll be able to start scanning around the area looking for the drone. Once you do find the drone, it only has about 34 HP. So it's almost like one shot with any weapon will take this thing down. And once it is destroyed, it will leave a marker on the map for your character, letting you know where the drone is. And you'll have to go all the way to that location to pick up the drone, repair it, and then use it again. So on one plus side, it's not like it's destroyed forever. But on the downside, you know, once it is destroyed and it's going to be destroyed pretty easily, you have to go all the way to the drone to use it. Also, one keynote thing on the drone, I think this, this will be fixed before it goes live server. The ascension key, so going up, is currently unbound. It's supposed to be spacebar or right trigger, but for whatever reason, it wasn't working for myself and a few of my friends on PC. So if you find that yours is unbound, I would just say it's safe to assume when it goes to live servers, they'll fix that in the keybind section. Last but not least on the drone, you can recall the drone back to your player using the right click on the mouse. I believe it's a left click on controller. And this is actually a pretty neat feature. So when you recall the drone, you click it one time, it'll let you know recall is initiated, and then you can swap weapons and go on about your normal day. You can loot, get in a vehicle or whatever, and the drone will make its way back to you. As long as you're within the 300 meter radius, it'll still follow all the way back to you. Now, it will not go through walls and it won't change height. It just goes in a straight line. So if you're behind cover, uh, behind a wall it will stop and it won't be able to get all the way to you 
And as you can see in the video, driving around on a motorcycle or a bicycle does make it pretty, pretty hard for the drone to catch up, but it does a really good job of at least staying near your location, which is pretty cool. Now, next up for the tactical gear is the EMT medic gear. Now, this actually works two different ways, and it is going to be pretty cheeky, I think, for squad gameplay. Number one, it does take up a primary weapon slot, just like the drone does. So you have to sacrifice one of your main weapons to hold this. But number two, you can use the benefits without actually having the item equipped. So as long as it's just in your inventory, you as the player who has the EMT gear in your inventory will get access to a number of benefits. The biggest thing is that it only takes three seconds to use any healing item, such as a bandage, first aid, or even a full medical kit. Now the medical kit usually takes 10 seconds, for example, and you can do that in as little as three seconds when you have this item. In addition, the med kit is going to give you full boost once you fully heal as well. So you'll get 100 health and full level four boost, which is really, really, really powerful. Usually to get full boost, you have to use an adrenaline syringe, which takes six seconds. So you're talking about two animations that usually take 16 seconds total. You're able to do in three seconds. That is really powerful in PUBG. In addition, it only takes three seconds to revive a knockdown teammate. So this is like that critical response kit in Paramo, but instead of it only being used one time on a teammate, you can do this unlimited amount of times as long as you have the EMT gear in your inventory. In addition, you can walk faster while using your healing items, so you're actually more mobile while healing. And on top of that, bandages and first aid kits can now heal you to maximum health. They no longer stop at 75% health. So if you have this in your inventory, you can use a bandage or first aid, get up to full 100 health. You can revive way faster. You can heal way faster and you can move faster while healing. So a lot of really good benefits just for having it in your inventory. Now, when you actually have the item equipped, you get those same benefits plus these new additional benefits here. So on the bottom of the screen next to your health bar, it's going to show you which healing item you have toggled. You can toggle between bandage, first aid and med kit. Now, while you're toggling between those items, you're going to be able to use any of those items on your teammate. So if you walk up to your teammate and you have your bandages toggled and you press the interact key, you will start to heal your teammates for them and they can still be healing themselves as well. So it's a way to get your teammates healed up really fast. Or if they don't have any heals, instead of you having to drop one and then use it on them, you can use your healing item on them and it only takes you three seconds to do it. In terms of downsides for the EMT gear, there's only honestly a couple of things. Number one, the fact that it takes up a primary weapon slot is going to be a big deterrent on picking this up in solos and even in duo gameplay. I'd really love to see this go into your you know secondary slot or your melee slot. And number two, they did nerf it in the blue zone. So you will not get the healing boost uh, with a speed boost rather and you will not get the shortened revival time while you're in the blue zone so you can still heal your teammates with it you can still revive your teammates with it who are knocked out but not not flushed but they won't get that speed healing boost that you get while you're not in the blue zone all right so now let's go to the live pings now live pings used to be in PUBG about a year year and a half ago and they were removed due to a big amount of pay player backlash and they were removed for a number of reasons. So first, let's talk about the positives. Number one, this is gonna be a quick way to indicate exactly what location, direction, and even window or door that you're looking at while you're telling your teammates where an enemy is. Number two, this ping can be seen up to a thousand meters away. Now that's also gonna be a negative later on, but as a positive, your teammates are able to tell you pretty much anywhere in the local vicinity where an enemy is, uh, where a loot drop might have landed, or you know where they want to rotate to next. Okay, so it's a quick indication of communicating with your teammates. Now, for the negative side for the ping marker situation, there, there honestly is a few of them. So, number one, the ping system does not automatically disappear. So, if someone puts a marker down on a window or a door or wherever, they'll stay there for the rest of the game unless that player manually deletes it with a delete key or creates a new ping marker somewhere else the ping system does go slightly opaque whenever you ads into the ping but you can still see it there 
even if you're trying to ADS and shoot a target who happens to be in front of or behind your ping. So it's going to have the tendency to get right in your face in the middle of your gunfights, depending on where that marker is placed. That's going to be very, very annoying. In addition, having the ping stay there permanently is going to lead to a lot of scenarios where you or enemies are going to be pre-firing certain locations because of where your teammates have called out enemy targets. Now, while this may not seem like a big deal, this is going to lead to a lot of cheating accusations with aim hacks or wall hacks or x-ray vision, ESP, that kind of stuff. People are going to be thinking to themselves, how the heck did that guy know that I was right in this corner of the window when, you know, realistically all their teammate did was just ping the window. And so the teammate pre-fired thinking, okay, they might peek that side. So that is going to be definitely a concern. Um, and then lastly, the, the pings, I just think should not be visible for that far away. They're, like I said, a thousand meters away. That's one giant square on your map. A ping can be seen and you can see it through the mountains and ground and whatever. So it's always going to be that kind of visual burden in your face. What I think they really need to do is limit the length of the live uh, ping. So it should only stay on the screen for say a second, maybe two seconds at most, and it should disappear. Number two, Whenever you ADS, the ping should almost disappear. So it should never really be in your line of sight while you're ADSing to shoot a target because it can really get in the way of seeing if a target's peeking or not, or, you know, what angle they're holding. It just really shouldn't be that obtrusive. And then lastly, you know, maybe they should limit the distance that you see a live ping to like a hundred meters, you know, like one of the small squares. That way, you know, if there's an enemy nearby in the town that you and your team are fighting, they can ping them. But, you know, if there's an enemy 400 meters away that someone's sniping at that you have no shot at shooting at, you, the ping is not going to disrupt, you know, your visual part of the gameplay unless you go to the map and you see the ping on the map like normal. Okay, uh, moving on to action queuing. Now, I've talked about this in depth on a number of videos before, but I'll keep it simple here. Action queuing is going to be one of the best quality of life improvements that you've ever had in PUBG. So I'll give you this example because this is going to be the easiest one to recognize, I think. Previously in PUBG, when you would shoot your weapon and you had to stop to reload your weapon, in order to re-ADS, you had to wait for the animation to completely finish. Then you had to re-click the ADS button in order for the character to re-aim. If you happen to press the ADS button too soon, before the animation was fully complete, the character would never ADS and you would just stand there hip firing. Well, now with the action queuing, as soon as the reload animation starts, you can hold down your ADS key. And at the very moment that the animation is complete, your character will immediately ADS, allowing you to get in and out of gunfights much more quickly. This also applies to jumping down or up from short ledges or steps or rocks. You can now stay ADS for short distances of falling. And if you happen to fall for too long of a distance where the game un ADSs you, as long as you're still holding the ADS button, it will immediately re ADS when you hit the ground and are able to aim again. The only downside is that you will have a little bit of the weapon sway from your character's movement, you know, going from falling to stationary. And that's just something I think is a, a basic PUBG mechanic. There's no getting around that. So this mechanic also applies to things like reloading, vaulting, throwing grenades, throwing melee weapons, any action that you want to do in the game. You don't have to wait for the first animation to be fully complete and run the risk of hitting the button too soon. You can now just hold the next button that you want to do and the game will fluidly transition to that next animation. So this is a big, big change and a great positive improvement for PUBG's gameplay. Last but not least, our VSS and Winchester are receiving a much needed buff. Now, not in terms of damage, but in terms of usability. So the Winchester now has an installed canted sight option. So you can swap down the scope, go to iron sight mode for close range fights, or swap up the scope and use the scope like you have been in the past, whatever, two seasons, three seasons. So really good change here. The VSS also has the same change, but Instead of it having a built-in canted sight, you do have to find a canted sight to attach to it. And there seems to be a bit of an issue here with the location of the canted sight on the VSS. As you can see in this example, when you have the canted sight on the VSS, it's so far down the weapon's barrel that it's really, really tiny and hard to see. 
And if you move too fast, you actually lose the reticle on the candid sight very easily. If you look at the AK, the candid sight is much closer to the character's face. So it's bigger, easier to see, and much easier to keep track of and control. I'm not sure how they can fix this without basically just making the canted sight mount closer to the uh, base of the weapon as opposed to the barrel. I know that won't be as realistic because that's not where the mounting point is. But from a gameplay perspective, I think it probably should be done here. All right, guys, and that wraps it up for today's tutorial video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, share it with a buddy, get subscribed for new PUBG content. I'll have a bunch more stuff coming your guys' way. Don't forget to use creator code CDOM at checkout. It helps support me for free whenever you buy things in the PUBG store. And last but not least, don't forget to check out our ultimate PUBG guides. I have over 19 videos where we detail all of the need to know things about PUBG. So if you're a new player or a returning veteran looking to brush up some of your skills, go check out that playlist, Ultimate PUBG Guides. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Peace.